This is Dr. Robert Freiberg, and I'm happy to be with you today to present this brief overview on topical wound oxygen multimodal therapy for chronic wounds. Now, I've been using this modality for a number of years now, and our experience in concert with the great uh, clinical data that we've uh, recently obtained uh, should convince you that topical wound oxygen therapy can be a very advantageous uh, management strategy for your chronic wounds. This uh, therapy it has FDA clearance for the treatment of acute and chronic wounds, such as skin ulcers due to diabetes, venous stasis ulcers, post-surgical infections, and dehiscences and gangrenous lesions. Decubitus ulcers, amputations, infected stumps, skin grafts, burns, frostbite, almost any type of chronic wound uh, you can use topical wound oxygen therapy on. Now, what's unique about this device is that it has a extremity chamber, a disposable single-use extremity chamber that you can see on the bottom right panel. And uh, this is used safely at home by the patient, uh, can be applied over dressings or with dressings uh, removed. And this is where we've had most of our experience in using this uh, modality. However, as you can see on the panel on the left, we also have a, a sacral patch, which can be used for ulcers on the torso or the buttocks or for pressure wounds or for atypical uh, locations. This just adds to the types of wounds that you can normally treat with this modality. During the COVID-19 pandemic, we found that this at-home therapy was very helpful in maintaining continuity of care at home for our patients. The TWO2 multimodality topical wound oxygen therapy provides wound care safely for your patients while they're at home. This has been effective in wound infection management by helping to keep the patients out of the hospital. Treatments can be applied by the patient at home without the need for clinic visits. This is very helpful, of course, during the pandemic. And patients managed by a dedicated uh, care team with uh, telehealth and prescriber feedback was also uh, very important in the success of managing these patients. Now, there's been over 15,000 wound care patients safely treated at home across the United States over recent years. And what we found is that this therapy is six times more effective in healing and keeping chronic wounds healed for up to 36 months. Additionally, it's reimbursed nationwide across the Veterans Administration as well as uh, New York Medicaid. Now, we all know that oxygen has a role in wound healing across the continuum of the wound healing uh, cascade, whether it be the hemostasis uh, stage where the hypoxia is triggering the inflammatory uh, response, certainly during the inflammation phase where we have compromised vasculature leading to hypoxia and stalling of wound progress. We also know that during this phase, that respiratory burst is absolutely critical for the uh, generation of appropriate cytokines and inflammatory mediators, reactive oxygen species that can help promote wound healing and clearance of debris from the uh, wound uh, in preparation for the next phase, which is, of course, proliferation. And obviously, in proliferation, there's a great deal of energy, that so-called uh, respiratory burst that's so important for the generation of uh, endothelial tissues, angiogenesis, fibroblastic proliferation, collagen synthesis, etc. And so we know that hypoxia will impact all the biological processes and enzymatic activities necessary to promote proper tissue generation. And then finally, in uh, the maturation phase, we note that remodeling and epithelialization is also dependent upon adequate levels of oxygen for the cellular activities. And we also note that when using topical oxygen therapy, there as can often be a reduction in the onset of uh, recurrences because of a better skin healing with the oxygen therapy. So we can see here, although it might be somewhat confusing here or somewhat busy slide, the important thing is that oxygen is needed and essential throughout 
the wound healing continuum. So TWO2 provides effective wound care by delivering oxygen supplementation. And as we said, it helps overcome the stalled inflammatory process. It helps overcome the diminished or absent immune response and promotes angiogenesis. And it helps to alleviate the impairment of collagen synthesis that the chronically hypoxic wound would have present. The cyclical compression offered by this multimodality therapy can reduce edema and will alter the dynamics for the flow of nutrients and metabolites, of course. The positive pressure allows granulation within the fistulas without collapsing the tunnels within those fistulas. And it can also stimulate uh, damaged end arteries and thereby promote angiogenesis as well. And this device also has a certain degree of humidification as desired to provide that necessary moist wound healing environment. And it can support prairie wound tissues as well. So we find that this multimodality therapy really has a positive effect in multiple parameters during the wound healing cascade, as we've said. So it makes very unique in, in this regard. Now, we know that we always hear glowing reports of wonderful therapies, but lacking a lot of good evidence. But we've just completed the TWO2 DFU study, which was published in March of 2020 in diabetes care. This was a very robust study that was uniquely designed with standard of care run-in and a group sequential design protocol. I will refer you to the paper uh, in Diabetes Care uh, March issue. But what we found only using an intention to treat protocol was that complete wound healing at 12 weeks was achieved with very strong, significant results uh, between the two arms uh, with the primary endpoint of 100% healing at 12 weeks. Found in the active arm, 41.7% of patients completely healed at 12 weeks compared to the sham therapy. And this was, the control group was placebo sham, identical in every way to the active therapy, all the bells and whistles and lights, but no active pressurized oxygen was uh, delivered, just ambient room air. And in that regard, the sham group healed at a rate of 13.5%. So this was obviously a very significant, as you can see on the uh, slide here. And we like to use the term six by six because we found that the actively treated groups were six times more likely to heal in 12 weeks than that group treated with standard care and sham therapy alone. This was based on Cox proportional hazard multivariate modeling. We also found a six times lower recurrence of wounds in the active group compared to the sham group at 12 months. So again, we see that durability of healing that's so uh, vitally important for our patients. Great success has also been obtained by managing a chronic uh, VL use as well. Several studies have been done by Will uh, Topic out of Ireland, and this paper that was published in uh, January of 2013 uh, showed the beneficial aspects of the topical wound oxygen therapy when compared to standard compression dressing therapies for the management of refractory non-healing venous ulcers. And these venous leg ulcers that had failed to heal by standard of care, which would be uh, obviously a uh, compression. They found that the pain score had decreased eight to three in 13 days. There was an MRSA elimination in the active group of 46% versus 0% after five weeks in the control arm. Ulcers were completely healed by three months in 76% of patients in the active TWO2 treated groups compared to 46% of patients in the uh, control dressing group. And after 36 months, recurrence was only 6% in the TWO2 treated patients compared to the standard therapy arms. So in summary, we are seeing that the topical wound oxygen therapy, which is been on the market for a a number of years, has been effective across the board for managing chronic wounds. We have level one trial on diabetic foot ulcers in concert with other parative trials and series on other diabetic foot ulcers, as well as venous leg ulcers. So we hope that this will entice you to learn more about this very, very uh, important therapy. And I would just direct you directly to your local AOTI representative for further information and a trial. And with that, I'd like to thank you very much uh, for your attention.